Pesca'r fach a'i fwla, is mae'n siwr yn ennyd, ac yn dwyf y sy'n y brin mi gen a'n tabydil. Hello everyone, I'm Rachel and today we're talking about the Gaelic alphabet. Um, I did make a video on this topic three or four years ago and it was aimed at um, linguistics undergraduate students and not at Gaelic learners um, and it's apparently my most popular video and a lot of Gaelic learners look at it so I'm redoing it in what will hopefully be a more accessible and potentially more accurate manner um, because at that point I didn't know too much about um, Gaelic dialectal variation either. I presume if you're watching this video that you're trying to learn Gaelic. Um, I suppose this might not be the case. You could be um, someone who's doing a slightly unusual amount of research before ranting about Gaelic road signs, um, in which case I commend you on doing more homework than normal. Um, I'm not going to commend you on your work because I don't want you to rant about Gaelic road signs, but you know, keep on with uh, doing your research, we'll convert you yet. Um, but for those of you who are here because you want to learn Gaelic, um, it might be that you've um, got a, a textbook or you've been working through Duolingo and you're a bit confused by how the spelling works. Um, because Gaelic and English both use the Latin alphabet, so it's very easy to get um, confused by the interference of, of how English spelling works because we're using the same letters and therefore you expect the um, phonological system to be similar. You expect the sounds to track to the letters in the same way you're used to in English and this isn't the case in Gaelic. So what we have here is a chart of the consonants that exist in English and Gaelic. Now if you're not a linguist don't be too um, scared by the chart, it's just mostly um, with colours to show you um, the difference. The consonant sounds that exist in Gaelic only are in blue, in English only are in red, and in both languages are in black. And as you can see, there's not actually too much overlap there. So even though both languages are being written with the same letters, those letters are trying to represent some very different sounds from each other. Now, neither way of trying to represent the sounds with the letters we have is better. It's just basically this alphabet was invented for the sounds of Latin. Even then it was adapted from an alphabet that was invented for the sounds of Greek, which was adapted from an alphabet that was invented for the sounds of Phoenician. Um, but, you know, it's just basically working with the letters we have to represent sounds that are not necessarily natural for this alphabet. Um, however, you know, neither is better than the other, but it's always worth pointing out that Alec has been written with this um, orthographical system for literally longer than English has been a language. And that's not even an exaggeration. The modern Gaelic spelling is a direct descendant of um, the way Old Irish was written with the Latin alphabet starting from about the 6th century, um, which was before the Anglo-Saxon and Jute Germanic dialect arrived in England. So there you have it. It's not a wacky made up spelling system. It's been around for longer than English. But you're not here to listen to me talk about the history of alphabets you're here to work out how to pronounce the alphabet. Um, so, you might have seen this phrase thrown about, cool to cool, it's lehen re lehen, um, or broad to broad and slender to slender, and wondered what it means. Uh, you might have read somewhere that the slender sounds are I and E, and the broad sounds are A, O and U, um, and you might have heard this applied to consonants as well, because um, actually what Curl on lehen is, even though we express it with vowels, it actually reflects how the consonant is pronounced. Now this is, believe it or not, what your mouth would look like if we sliced your head down the middle. Um, and the reason I'm showing you this is because vowels are normally described um, on a, a chart that looks like this, which basically shows whereabouts in your mouth your tongue is when you're making that vowel sound. So the slender vowels, e and e are made with your tongue right at the top front of your mouth, about here. And the broad vowels, o, a, u, are made with your tongue further back and down in your mouth like this. So what happens in Gaelic is a process called palatalization, which happens in most languages. Um, it happens in, you know, it's the reason in English that C sometimes sounds like K and sometimes sounds like S because this palatalization process happened a while ago. Um, 
but in some very special languages like um Gallic and like a lot of Slavic languages, it's become uh you know this palatalization has affected all the consonants. So basically what's happening is when you're pronouncing a consonant sound next to one of these slender vowel sounds, it or e, eh, it drives the um well pulls the sound of the consonant a little further to the front of your mouth. Or more correctly, nearer to your palate. So this means that when we say this sound is slender, this is a slender L or a slender N or whatever it might be, that means that compared to where you normally make that sound in your mouth, you need to drag it a little bit more towards your palate, which is the hard bit at the top of your mouth. So instead of T, we have CH, it's just that little bit nearer the, the soft palate. Instead of G, we have Q, that sort of thing. So there's palatalization or slenderization, and the next concept you need to come to grips with is lenition. And you might have encountered lenition um, when you see an H appear in a word uh, immediately after the, the consonant at the beginning of it. So it will be the second letter in the word, and the H will appear, and it's there in some words, it's not there in other words. Like, uh, Martin, va, there's an H in there. Fesked, ma, there isn't. So that's lenition, which is also known as aspiration or softening. Now, this is actually a mutation. So what you need to do right now is take a moment to pause and be really grateful that you've chosen to learn Scottish Gaelic and not literally any other Celtic language. Um, these initial consonant mutations, as they're technically called, are a feature of Celtic languages. And Gaelic only has the one. Uh, it's fuzzy. There might be two in some dialects, but we tend not to talk about that. Um, Irish definitely has two. Cornish has four. I think Welsh might also have four, and Breton has more than that. I'm not sure how many. But you've taken this moment, you're really glad you've chosen Scottish Gaelic. You only have to learn one mutation, and that is Chevachach or Lonition. So I'm going to take you back to this consonant chart we looked at before, and we'll look at some of the terms here. Um, so we've got stops, which is what it sounds like. What happens when you're producing a stop consonant is for a second, no air is coming out of your mouth. It makes that popping sound because there's air build up and then it all explodes out. But for a while, you're stopping the air. So then you've got an affricate. Some air is coming out. Fricative. Slightly more air is coming out. Um, and then we've got, you know, nasals and approximates and taps and trills and there, so on are also some air coming out. And then you get right down to just with all air coming out of your mouth. And that's what we call a vowel. But um, basically what a lenition is, is it causes whatever sound you're making to sort of bump one step up the hierarchy or, of how much air is coming out, or on this chart, down the hierarchy of how little air is coming out. So you have, for example, cat. This is a, a stop. It's technically a, a voiceless velar stop at the beginning of the sound. This is a stop sound at the beginning of the word, and when you would lenite it, for example, if you put the word mo my in front of it, it becomes mo chat, mo chat, and this is a voiceless velar fricative. So it's gone from being a stop to a fricative. You're saying it in the same place. You're saying it in almost the same way because there's no um, voicing to it, uh, but you're now letting some air through. So you've gone from k to h. Um, the same would happen in, say, balach for boy. So b, balach at the beginning. But if you're addressing the boy, you say a valich, a valich. You're saying the sound in the same way with your two lips and 
no aspiration and no voicing, which is something I'll get to in a moment. Um, but you're letting more air through. So you've gone from b, balach, to v, valach. So kat to chat, b to balach to valach. So your two main things to remember today are the golden rule, broad to broad and slender to slender. And when you slenderize something, it means the sound is more towards the middle of your mouth than it would be if it weren't slender. And lenition, which is basically adding more air to the sound. Now we're at least 10 or 11 minutes now. So that's probably enough to remember today. And it will take quite a while to go through each of the letters in the alphabet and explain how to pronounce it because obviously each letter now has four, each consonant now has four possible variations, broad lenited, broad unlenited, slender lenited, slender unlenited. So tune back in next week and we will cover that then. Cheerie!